Hey guys, what is up? Mikey Laker Talk. Let's talk Lakers basketball. I want to get my thoughts on yesterday's game. Lakers destroy the Portland Trail Blazers on the road in Portland, 136 to 113. Throughout this video, I'm going to be looking down at my phone. I have the stats right here. I'm not in front of my computer, um, but I want to get my thoughts on the game and I'm going to get my thoughts on everything going forward and talk about impact players and what we need going forward as we progress through the season. Um, we're 20 and three right now. Lakers destroy Portland. Win our third game, third tough game in a row on the road. I don't remember a time ever, ever watching this Lakers, a Laker, a Lakers team, a Lakers season where we go into these three tough stadiums, Denver, Utah, and Portland. And destroy them easily. Now the Denver game was a little tight up until the end, but we still got them by six or seven or eight or nine. I forgot how many points. But we destroy Utah and we destroy Portland. Heck, Portland's been tough forever. Utah's been tough forever since Utah's been tough since John Stockton, Carl Malone, and them way back. Portland's been tough since we had Nick Van Exel. We couldn't win in that stadium. Since they had J.R. Ryder, Sabonis in them, when we had Shaq, even when we had, you know, uh, uh, Vlade, they were tough forever. And we went into that stadium and basically snatched their soul. You can see Damon Lillard. You can see C.J. McCollum. You can see the coach. You can see the fans. Everybody like, damn, the Lakers are good. It's, it's like unfair. That's how good we are. Now, I'm not gloating. I'm not trying to like clown any other teams, but we haven't had this in a while, in a minute. And this is, we're, we're, we're really good. We're back. All right, now I'm gonna enjoy it, but I'm gonna be realistic about it and talk about how we need to continue to be, to advance and continue to dominate game after game after game. First and foremost, I'm going to start with our two superstars. Salute to our superstars for completely going into beast mode and dominating this game. Anthony Davis and LeBron James combined for 70 points. Now, 70 points, your two superstars. That means either somebody went for 50, the other one went for 30. Or one of them went for 35, the other one went for 35. Or the other one, one went for 40, the other one went for 30. And that's what happened yesterday. AD went for damn near 40, 39 points. LeBron with 31. And they completely dominated and snatched the heart and the soul out of Portland last night. That reminds me, there's no other team in the NBA that has two superstars that can play at the highest level of their potential and complement one another more than what LeBron James and AD can do. Kawhi can't do it. Kawhi and PG, they're close, but they play the same position. They can both get 30, but they're not going to play at the, their full potential and complement one, one another. Porzingis and Luka, now you can see, see the game. Luka is playing out of his mind right now at a 20 years of age level. The dude is a, a complete beast, playing very slow, methodical, and just destroying teams. So I, I'm not even talking about Luka. But you look at Luka's stats, and then you look at Porzingis' stats. Porzingis ain't, ain't, ain't scoring 30. He's not scoring 30 while Porzingis is, is, is putting, or uh, Luka's putting up his numbers. Mind you, I talk about, I've been talking about Dallas a lot lately because I got my eye on them and I really respect what Luka is doing and their supporting cast. And to me, they're right there with us in terms of one, two, and three. I think it's like us, Clippers, and I would put Dallas up there because I think they can actually get better than where they are. So that's why I always talk about Dallas. So you're going to hear me talk about Dallas a lot because the way Luka is running that team, it's and they're supporting cast. They have, they're very well coached and they have a lot of confidence going on. They have a really good supporting cast. And I think they're going to eat, they're going to get even better. And we, we're going to have to compete with them. So you hear me talk about Dallas a lot. 
uh, over the last few days and I'm going to continue to talk about them, kind of hit on them because they got my eye. But having said that, there's no other team that have what we have in terms of our dominating superstars. And if we play like that, if they play even close to what they showed yesterday, we can't be beat. I missed yesterday's game. Uh, some friends and I, we went to uh, we went to Lucky Strike. I was actually down there at LA Live. I'm like, uh, so they had the game on, but we're bowling and all this stuff, and I couldn't really watch the game. Came home late. I DVR'd the game. Came home late around one o'clock. I watched the game at like 1:30, and I, I watched the first half. I actually, fell asleep at halftime. Picked it up this morning. Watched it again, and. Uh, I record, I don't, I, I love Stu Lance and them, but I, when I record, when I, I want to hear, I love hearing like other analysts talk about the Lakers and how good they are. So yesterday, you know, I always like Mark Jackson, um, Jeff Van Gundy and them, but um, yesterday we had Doris Burke and the other dude. Uh, and so it's always good listening to them. And then at halftime, we got these freaking clowns, Paul Pierce Jalen Rose and they didn't even mention the Lakers that much they were Clippers get blown out by like 40 points and they're like yeah these two teams can be in the uh in the uh finals and uh, they didn't even talk about the Lakers pretty much they, they give the t Lakers like 10 seconds anyway it's all good um but so the the halftime halftime show was was crap but um but on to the game so the game, we, we completely dominated this game. Um, AD, 39 and 9. LeBron James, 31 and 7. Uh, 31, 7 and 8. McGee, 13 points. Danny Green and KCP with 3 and 5 points. Listen, they didn't score a lot, but I want to talk about their impact. And I'll talk about that in a second. Kuzma actually had a good game scoring-wise. Um, 15, 6 rebounds. He played He played good. He played efficient. When he was on the floor, he didn't screw up. He played good and made some shots. And uh, so shout out to Kuzma. Um, I don't have to talk about him so much, but I want to talk about what I consider to be an impact player because it doesn't change anything that I said about Kuzma. And this is real talk. We need to... We need to continue to have guys step up and be impact players, especially when guys like Rondo go out. He got his strain, his calf or, or hamstring strain, and um, I don't know how long is he going to be out, but we'll see. Uh, Dwight Howard, five points, ten rebounds. Um, Troy Daniels, uh, what do you, nine points? Caruso, Caruso scored eight points. Rondo. Six points, three, three rebounds, three assists, and uh, Quinn Cook just chipped in with it, whatever. But here's the deal. When I'm watching this game, first off, I'm watching this game, and, and we're playing at such a high level. It seems like whenever we play national TV games, I don't know if it's because LeBron James respect. He loved national TV games. This dude, he just balls out. I was actually, he, he's balling out all this year, but I'm saying last year when national TV games came on, he would ball out all the time. And he respects Doris Burke. But um, this, this yesterday, we were just, we knew it was national TV. And we had a pep in our step. LeBron looking like he was a 23-year-old out there. Flying up and down, you know, defending, rebound, whatever. He was doing everything. And AD was a complete monster. But then you got everybody else chipping in. And I'm watching the game. When you, when you know the outcome of a game and you can actually record it and watch it and kind of just analyze the game... What, you, what I notice is how impactful our players are. KCP, Danny Green, like I said, they only scored three points, but I didn't even know they scored three points, but they're so impactful when they're on the floor. And uh, you got guys like Dwight Howard. You don't really realize how much. He only scored five points, but he's so impactful on the floor. When, I didn't even know Rondo scored six points, but he's so impactful on the floor. And at the crucial times when we're taking leads, when we're destroying, you got these group of guys that are out there that are just so impactful. They're vets and they know they know what to do and they know how to just make plays and, and, and do the right thing. That's when I when I say Kuzma, when I when I look when I talk about Kuzma and potentially trading him, and I'm not saying that Kuzma can't score a bucket. There is nowhere ever that I ever say Kuzma can score score a bucket. What I'm saying is can you be impactful? You can Kuzma can score six to eight points, but is he impactful when he's on the floor? I'll give you some examples. And Kuzma actually yesterday had a, had a 
decent scoring game. So I'm not even, this is not even about anything. I'm not even trying to, to figure out a way out to say Kuzma is not an impactful player. I'm saying as we progress, Kuzma had a decent game yesterday, but I'm saying as we progress, for example, Rondo was out. He's got a hamstring thing. Rondo's in there and he's making plays. If you watch the game, Rondo makes a, a underhand pass to, to AD in the corner and moves over to kind of screens the guy out so AD can get that three-point shot out, right, to end the half or whatever, to end the quarter. I forgot what it was. Little things like that. AD passed the ball to uh, KCP for another bucket. KCP's under the rim knowing that he can't get the bucket comes over, underhands it to AD for the dunk. Just smart basketball plays, right? Uh, Dwight Howard out there scrapping, picking up fouls, always got his hands on somebody, right? Caruso, you don't, Caruso comes in flying off the whatever, like the other games where he comes in and he just makes plays. The thing is, can you be impactful even without scoring? That's the thing, when I talk about Kyle Kuzma, he can score, but, if, if Kyle Kuzma, if you watch most of his game, he's out there like a, like a, a free safety looking for the ball. He's like Troy, Troy Daniels, like those type of players. They're not as, they're not super impactful at every part of the game. That's why they don't play that much. Can Kyle Kuzma turn it around? Can he be impactful? We need him too. If you're watching the game and you're saying, hey, Mike, nah, Kuzma played well. That's how I want him to play. Then guess what? To me, that's even expendable too because the game was already cleaned up LeBron and everybody else completely destroyed the game the game was out of reach anyway right no I'm talking about when we need you can you go in there and impact the game on a positive aspect yesterday Kuzma actually played well I'm not even talking about that I'm talking about going forward can you be think about the impact players Caruso Rondo KCP on a defensive end and also passing the ball, making the right play. Danny Green on a defensive end and hitting shots here and there, right? Dwight Howard defensively. We know when we, when we bring him in, he's going to impact the game defensively, okay? When we bring in Troy Daniels, we don't know what we're going to get. He's going to be on the perimeter waiting for a shot, and he might hit that shot, right? And that's a, that's a, that's a good shot. But you're not going to keep that guy in there long term because he doesn't impact the game in other ways, right? If you look, I want, I want, I want Kuzma to impact the game in other ways. Can he do that? That's what I'm looking for over the next two months. That's going to get me like a, being, become a fan of Kuzma. Can he do that? That's to be determined. If you've ever coached a team, I'm talking about for all you guys who coached Pop Warner football. AAU basketball, baseball, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. There's certain guys on your team that actually just make plays. Plays you can't even teach. You know what I'm talking about. When you coach a team, you coach fundamentals, right? But when the game time comes, you got a guy that's over here diving for the ball and everybody else looking around and standing and looking at that one stud who's diving for the ball because he's over there making a play. You got a football player that's doing a spin move or jumping over another guy he's making a play you got a basketball player that knows how to set screens that's going up for the block that's coming up on the weak side and hitting the ball boom doing whatever he can but is just making a play you're in the game somehow some way somehow some shapers you're actually involved in the play things you can't even teach those are the type of players we need especially when you got a guy like Rondo who's now going to go out. When to have our depth, to, we just can't have a guy sitting in the corner, give me the ball, give me the ball, give me the ball, boom, you're one trick pony. No, you got to do other things. I want you to impact the game on the other end because little things like that, when you make go out there and make a play and you're a, a vet, you play smart and you make plays on both ends of the floor, that's what's going to allow us to dominate teams like we did yesterday. So I look at all these guys who... Rondo, Dwight, Caruso, KCP, Danny Green, role players who I like, who can impact the game in, in, in other ways, who make plays. And I want Kuzma to be right there as well. And to me, Kuzma actually shot well yesterday. He, he you know, he shot the ball. He made some big shots. So I'll give it to, 
to Kuzma. You know, when he plays well, he plays well. And even when he doesn't play poorly, I'm not going to call him out. I already, my mind, I've been watching Kuzma for three years now. This is, I want him to be impactful. You got Doris Burke, that the cameras focus on him when he's on the bench. When he's not even playing. And they're like, if, if he can be, if he can help out on the defensive end. Because she even, she even alluded to Clippers depth. She goes, they got some players who can play defense. Montrez, you got Lou Williams, and even Lou Williams is playing defense now. She goes, if Kuzma can, can, can become one of those players, this team's going to be really good. That's all I'm saying. I go a step further and say, yeah, I would probably shop Kuzma quietly. And, 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 but that's just, that's just the truth. But if Kuzma can, can become an impact player and start making plays, we're just we're 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 completely set. There's nothing to be done. There's no trades to be made. Let's ball out, and that's gonna just only help out other teams and and make it really hard for Frank Vogel to get guys minutes. Anyway, I'm super excited about the team. I'm super pumped. I mean, I'm 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 a huge fan of Rondo, and Rondo, in my opinion, is is a huge loss if he has to sit out um four or five games with a you know a hamstring because we go in we got we got some light games we got minnesota the tough team coming in we got then we got or we got we fly out for like five four games we got orlando matt or the heat we got indiana and then we got the bucks coming up so we need everybody to step up make plays and be impactful on the team all right Anyway, that's my thoughts. I'm 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 pumped. I'm really I'm really happy about where we are. I'm excited about our team and uh, can't say enough about the squad and and just uh, you know looking for us to continue and stay healthy. Anyway, hit me up in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks for commenting, liking, subscribing. As always, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Mike Sports Delay. Be sure to check out the link in the description. Fanatics.com. I'm partnering with them if you want to buy some stuff, get some fresh gear, Lakers gear, hats, jerseys, t-shirts, all that stuff. Link is in the description. A lot of fresh deals going on. Anyway, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me, Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. And we'll talk soon. All right, peace. Holla to you guys. Later.